Welcome to the Broken Bat pod, uh, Podcast. Uh, we're here with Director of Player Personnel for the Somerset Patriots, John Hutton. Um, he's also the team's closer. And we're just going to go over uh, some of the stuff that he's done in his career uh, and some highlights, but also uh, talk to him about independent baseball and baseball in general. Uh, so, John, just tell us the story of uh, how you became uh, the Director of Player Personnel for the Patriots. Uh, well, it it was a slow process. Um, you know, I, I kind of helped some teams out back in the day before I got you know hooked up with Somerset, and that's kind of where I got my you know footprint in you know and known. Where there's coaches and teams and players that knew of my connections, um, you know, my knowledge of the process of signing guys, the negotiation, all that stuff, and so it, it really started in the American Association, whereas I was kind of doing it for a couple years. Uh, with basically the teams I was on just to get the teams as good as possible. I wanted to win every, everywhere I've been. I want to win. So I wanted to bring, you know, buddies or players that I played against, uh, you know, over the teams I was on. And uh, Somerset, I played here in 08 uh, at the end of the play, uh, end of the regular season, and we won the championship that year. And uh, Brett Jody was the pitching coach. And that's kind of um, where it really started was me getting him a pitcher from the other league to come over and help us in the playoffs and that's kind of uh that's kind of where I, I struck gold real quick where I was like you know he asked me for you know a good arm and I, I right off the bat I was like what do you need righty lefty starter reliever and Brett was kind of like whoa I didn't know you were kind of I didn't know you were going to come back at, back, back at me like that and so I gave him uh, two options. We talked about him, and we picked the guy. His name was Joel Kirsten. He was from Fort Worth, and uh, he came over here, did a lights-out job for the year we were there in 08, and we won the championship. And then he was there the next two next two years in the playoffs for him, and that was kind of the start of it. And then, um, obviously, when Brett got named manager here, I, I knew that this is the place I wanted to be, and I wanted to be teamed up with Brett, and uh, I was thankful and lucky enough that you know the organization gave me an opportunity. So obviously, part of your job is is bringing players in. I mean, that's your main job, really, besides you know closing games. But how do you convince players to come here? How do you sell them on the idea of independent ball as opposed to, you know, maybe you know trying to get that tryout with affiliated ball? I mean, what do you say to these guys? And honestly, I'm 100% straight up and honest with them, and that's kind of me and Brett's mo. Uh, obviously, the organization speaks for itself with the the credibility and the you know the the success that it's had in the past before us before I've even been here so that obviously uh, helps me out tremendously um, whereas teams already know about Somerset they already know about the Atlantic League um, but you know every player has different mindsets and they're in different places in their lives and and you know everyone you got to talk to differently um, you know but basically it's just I'm straight up with them um, if there's interest you know you know they have interest in coming here then I tell them more and I explain it you know everything they need to know um you know I'm basically at their disposal and I tell the guys that hey if you have any questions it doesn't matter what time it is you let me know you shoot me a text you know call me whatever you need to know I'll let you know and that's before even signing them that's just basically giving them the, the comfort level of all right you know I, I trust this guy this guy's giving me all the answers obviously all the answers I want to hear um, so that obviously makes it you know a lot easier for me to you know go and sign guys. But then of course there's players that played here in the past, and baseball is a small world, so um, people talk and they talk whether it's about me or Brett or uh, you know or the organization, and they've always had good things to say. And so that definitely is a you know a feather in Somerset's cap, and it definitely helps my job a lot easier. Why has Somerset been so successful? I mean, from the, the conception of it back in the, the late '90s. To now, Somerset's usually been this, it's a standard by independent baseball. Why have they been so successful? I mean, it's a it's a class act organization from top to bottom, and it all starts with the owner, Caliper. I mean, he he knows how to treat the the workers, the front office, and that trickles down to he knows how to treat the players. I mean, it, it's a it's a family here. It's not a it's not a business. And like, don't get me wrong, it is a business, you know, and that's that's baseball. But the players, the, you know, the guys in the field, we don't. Feel like it's a business. It doesn't. We don't. It doesn't come across us like, oh, I wish they were doing this for us. You know, no. The players understand like the the organization is doing as much as they can within within reason and within the rules. But um, they want to accommodate the guys and and you know they set up an atmosphere here that makes it comfortable uh, to have success to go home and, and live in a good setup where it's either a host family or or you know in in the suites um, which is our our setup. Um, but also to have success, whether 
it's before the game when you go work out in the gym, the state-of-the-art gym uh, in our skybox or the other gym in our locker room. Um, and that ob obviously helps you win, and it's all about having fun. And that's the big thing. You've been around, obviously, various teams, various independent leagues. There's a lot of teams in recent uh, years that have failed. Leagues have failed. Teams have failed. Why do you think they've failed? What's been the biggest uh, problem for these teams? Um, I don't, I don't know exactly why teams have failed, but obviously you need to have fans and you need to promote your organization with the, with the, with the community. You know, you need to have the right, uh, the right people running it, and you need to have the right people helping get the community to come out. Um, if you don't put up a good organization, or if you don't put up guys that are, are good players on the field and off more than less you're not going to get the fans to follow them they're not going to want to be out here to watch a guy that they don't really respect as a baseball player on and off the field um so i mean it, it all starts with class and, and you know, like i said it starts from the top too our owner in our in our in our example with our owner obviously like steve caliper is a great guy and he's done a lot of things in his career and his life um and so that that credibility right there helps our organization get off the ground and then you throw in a guy like Sparky Lyle, who's had success on and off the field as well. And then you kind of build off of that. If organizations don't have that that credibility or that respect or trust by their community and fans, then it's, you're not going to get money, and the money is what keeps the teams afloat. Do you think a lot of teams that fail, they, they rush into it? They, they see a product like in Somerset, beautiful stadium, winning organization, and then they say, hey, I can do that, I can do that in upstate New York, I can do that in the shores in, in Jersey, and then they just rush into it, they don't really think about it, and that's why they fail? I mean, I think that there's people and, and there's newer, newer teams and newer people trying to take over management that think it's easier than it really is. And, you know, I, I hear all the time about these other independent leagues that try to get off the ground, and they fold very quickly. Um, and it's, it's a, a lot of it has to do with funding, getting the money, but also getting the right people involved. I mean, if you don't have people that know what they're doing, it's not going to go far. You know, sooner or later, you know, cream rises at the top, and then if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, obviously you're not going to be making income, and it's not going to make revenue for your organization. So I just think some people think it might be easier than it actually is, but I'm sure it's hard. Right now you're chasing, obviously, the Atlantic League all-time saves record. Last year you broke the single-season record. Um, how do you feel about that? I mean, knowing that you're getting so much closer to that. Um, I mean, honestly, it, for me, it, it's, it's like a double-sided blade. Obviously, I want to go out there as a player and do the best I can to help my team win. But on the other side, like, I'm also bringing the players in here, and these players are the guys that are truly giving me the opportunity to go out there and get a save or, or go out there in a save opportunity. So, I mean, I credit everything to the, the team behind me. You know, if it isn't for the players giving me the lead or, or winning, you know, then there's no opportunity for me to get the saves. And then once I'm out there, it's obviously up to me to, up for me to do my job, and that's obviously close the ball game out. But, um, you know, I'm... I'm a pretty straightforward guy, and I'm a realist. Like, if it's not the team behind me defensively, it's not the team behind me offensively, I won't be where I'm at today as far as being close to that record. So let's say you're 10 saves away from the record, and a major league organization comes calling and says, hey, we need your services. We need a, we need a guy who's a closer who's got some experience. We're having some you know, troubles with the major leagues, and we're bringing guys up, but we need some players in our organization. What, what do you say to those teams as a, as a director of player personnel and as a player? Um, I mean, honestly, it would be a tough decision to make, but it would really have to be something that's a, very beneficial to me and my family for me to leave here. Um, they've given me such a great opportunity here to come in and do both jobs. Um, you know, so, you know, if it was a spot filler just to go and fill a spot, I mean, necessarily it's not really for me. You know, I wouldn't necessarily want to give up leaving these guys that I brought here and, and – you know, gave them, you know, everything, everything to get them here um, and then have to basically bail on them. That's not really the type of guy I am. Guy I am. Um, you know, I had some opportunities in the past to go overseas and, and quite frankly, it wasn't the thing, it wasn't the opportunities that I really wanted to kind of take advantage of. You know, I, I was happy with where I'm at now. Um, but don't get me wrong, like, if a team came and said it was a great opportunity, whereas there was potential to me possibly making it to the major leagues or moving up or... You know, then I would have to cross that bridge when it comes. But I'm not 
I'm not really worried about it. I'm not canceling it out, but um, if the opportunity was to arise, it would definitely have to be something worth my while. All right, John, just uh, thanks for your time, and uh, hopefully everything goes well, and maybe next time we'll be talking, you'll be the all-time Atlantic League saves leader. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Luke.